If you're at all interested in horror games or ever watch a streamer or two, you've probably at least heard of the new horror adventure game Scorn. The game has been in production for quite a long time, having been announced all the way back in 2014. Yes, that means many of us have been waiting nearly a decade for this release. Unfortunately, the game seems to be a bit divisive. I loved it, but will you? To preface this video, I want to come out and say that from the beginning, Scorn seemed like a game that was being tailor-made for me. The art direction of the game was primarily influenced by two artists, Giger and Bekshinsky. While I love both of these talented individuals, I have been a longtime fan of Bekshinsky. Many of you probably don't know this, but I actually have a Bachelor of Fine Arts. Bekshinsky was a huge influence on me and was even the subject of a few college assignments of mine. On top of that, I love the dark ambient music genre. And who created the score for this game? None other than Lustmord, the man often credited with creating dark ambient. I have extremely fond memories of taking long, lonesome walks in the dusk of winter, with light snowfall and the yellow glow of street lamps reflecting off the fresh powder, all while listening to Lustmord on my old iPod. Now tell me Ebb Software isn't stalking me. Jokes aside, Scorn seriously seemed like it was going to be my perfect game. Everything I saw seemed to imply the game would primarily focus on exploring the wondrous, eldritch environment with puzzles and some light action. And that's what was delivered. Scorn is not fast-paced. It is not action-heavy. It is akin to stepping into a world of a painting and trying to feel your way through. While many people might not find this gameplay engaging, I personally was enthralled. Scorn does not hold your hand. It thrusts you into its labyrinth and gives you nothing in the way of preparation. You will likely get lost or turned around, and even die a few times before you realize that you are missing something or utilizing a mechanic wrong. This might understandably piss a few people off, but I found it to be a breath of fresh air. You are meant to immerse yourself in this world. Lights off, headphones on, no distractions. The puzzles can be tough. There are no arrows or lit paths to indicate where you must go next. The HUD is super minimalist, suits the game's style, and is only present on screen when you're healing or reloading. In fact, I would have loved to see them incorporate the HUD into the character itself, much like you see in Dead Space. I feel it could have been in the manner of the ammo and health apparatus you have in-game. The combat is a bit clunky, but it reminds me of older survival horror games. If you choose to confront an enemy instead of running past them, you'll have to decide if you want to use up some of your sparse ammunition or get in close and personal with your melee weapon. Either way, most of the enemies in the game have ranged attacks, meaning you'll have to be very conscious of your positioning as you fight and flee. Again, this is all pretty slow paced, so don't expect to be running and gunning. For those of you out there who get heavily invested in the story of a game, Scorn will either turn you away or entice your sense of wonder and mystery. There is no dialogue in Scorn. There's no text or discernible language, nor is there a clearly defined goal. There's only what you, the player, see before you. There are a multitude of themes present in this game, many of which are heavily inspired by H.R. Giger. Those of you who opted for the deluxe edition and received the official Scorn art book can read a lot of behind the scenes info and some further lore about the game, but at the end of the day, it's pretty much open to your interpretation. In terms of length, Scorn could be described as short. On average, it takes between 5 to 7 hours to complete. As of making this video, I've spent about 11 hours total. A lot of it was just from taking things slow and sightseeing, as well as beginning another replay to get an achievement I missed. The length doesn't bother me too much. Of course I wish there was more areas and things to explore, but you can see the amount of effort that went into what we got. At the end of the day, I'd take a short game that was crafted with passion over a long game that was churned out without much thought. So as you can probably see, Scorn isn't going to be for everyone. It's pretty slow, there's lots of walking, backtracking, and trying to figure out what the hell you're supposed to do for this puzzle. The combat is repetitive and methodical, and there isn't a huge variety to the enemies. The visuals are stunning, the atmosphere is superb, and the soundtrack is haunting. This is actually starting to remind me of something. Yes, Scorn isn't for everyone, but if you can temper your expectations, what you'll find isn't just a game, but rather an unforgettable experience. <laughs>